What's going on? My name is Dylan with Manoa Chocolate. Today's episode of Craft Chocolate TV is going to be tasty notes you don't want in your beans and your chocolate. And <laughs> this is something we've learned over the last 10 years. So initially when we were starting out, we would taste beans and we would turn them into chocolate and be overly impressed with certain flavors like uh, forest floor and earthy and <laughs> in other words uh, moldy and bad ferments and poor drying and so we've now been able to link them and know that that wasn't a good ferment and what went wrong and what went wrong in drying because it rained for two weeks <laughs> so we're going to share what and once again this is our opinion what we don't want as far as tasting notes in our beans and what in the future we believe will objectively be poor quality beans. So, like I was just saying, forest floor, this moldy characteristic, we don't want. And the reason we don't want it is because this is a good example of beans that are moldy. The ferment might have went okay, however, it rained for two weeks while these were trying to dry. And these gray beans are covered in surface molds, which then penetrated inside this seed. Now we have to remember, this seed is about 50% cocoa butter. It's half fat. And fat will soak up flavor. This is why if you leave a chocolate bar exposed in your refrigerator, it's going to start to taste like your refrigerator. These beans are going to taste like mold. That's not a flavor that we are proud of showcasing in our chocolate. This is another example. Now when you're fermenting beans and the temperatures don't cooperate with you, when it's not hitting 120 degrees Fahrenheit a few different times, it's getting too cold, you're going to get the wrong kind of bacteria and this color, this look, tells you that the wrong bacteria are winning in the ferment. You'll start to see it in the corners of the ferment and this is this is why I'm so happy that we are in a location that we can grow cacao and we can make chocolate because we are exposed on the agriculture side in a different kind of way where we can see what's going right and wrong and have an understanding and relationship with making chocolate in a different kind of way. So when I see beans that are um, got this, this really dark color, right away I know something's wrong. The smell then is the next indicator the fat in this has begun to rancify. It's going bad and it's impossible to make good chocolate as a craft chocolate maker uh, to showcase this. <laughs> we, we once bought beans with a, another chocolate maker and it was in the very beginning of when we were making chocolate. One of the, it was the first year and five of the bags that we bought one of them was really good, two of them were okay, and the other, what was that, two more bags were just terrible. So rancified and disgusting. But this is the way that the market continues to work by and large. And so there was nothing that we could do. We tried to make chocolate because it was such a huge investment. Every bag of cacao was such a big investment at that point that every kilo mattered. At the end of the day, I think I burned them at home. And uh, that, that was, <laughs> there was just nothing we could do even making milk chocolate. Now, a big chocolate maker would have no problem adding something like potassium or sodium bicarbonate, but baking soda, and extracting these really offensive notes and making it only taste like chocolate. We're not that type of chocolate maker. We never will be, but that's the only remedy that you could do besides maybe pressing these beans and these beans for butter. But even your butter is going to taste like mold or taste somewhat rancid. That's just the greater commodity, the way that cacao works. We're not in that realm. That not, we're, not, we're almost a different commodity despite being cacao. So that gives you an idea of some of the tasting notes. But an, a, a few others, like if your cacao tastes like umami, like soy sauce, something is wrong. 
That's not something to celebrate or get excited about. Something wrong happened in the fermenting or the drying, or maybe the beans, the cacao pods were harvested overripe. Or if it's really astringent, oftentimes it was harvested underripe. All these factors we've started to piece together by seeing so many different micro ferments over the years. And so now, bitterness, astringency, these are also things that I personally don't like. Some people do like astringency, so this is a little bit subjective. I don't like it, so I do my best to buy beans that don't have it. I'm trying to buy beans that, as a raw seed, taste balanced. I want them to have this reddish color. I want them to taste fruity sometimes, or spicy, or nutty, but not bitter and not astringent, because those are two very difficult factors to work with in roasting and making chocolate. Those are things that you would be trying to get rid of and lessen in order to balance the chocolate. Whereas here, I don't have to worry about that at all. That reddish color tells me so much. Doesn't mean it's gonna be good, but it tells me a lot. It tells me that I'm gonna go to the next step and eat it, whereas I'm not gonna eat these. Just smelling them, they, they're awful and the color is wrong. It tells me what happened. Um, so nutty flavors, spicy flavors, fruity flavors, those are all good qualities in cacao. Uh, and like I said, this is not always going to be the case, but 99% of the time, that is how it works. So when you are trying to make chocolate, if you eat a raw cacao seed and it is palatable and it tastes like there's interesting flavors that you would want to turn into chocolate and, and eat more of, you've got something worth working with. So keep that in mind as you move forward on your micro batches or your bigger batches. This has been another episode of Craft Chocolate TV. Thanks for watching. See you next time.